Sir, I think you have a broken uh, head gasket. We got an Alaska Poda station. Sounds fantastic, but very low power. Alpha Tango Oscar. Oh, this would be cool to get. Come back, buddy. Did we just lose the opening to him? That's crazy. 203 Alpha Tango Oscar. There he is. There he is. What's going on? Did we just get hit with a... There we go. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Oh. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh oh, I'm going to put the amp on for this. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Oh, yeah, I'm amping it for this. We're getting this one. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try my hardest. Oh, don't don't wrap up. Don't wrap up. Don't wrap up, buddy. Where'd he go? 7211, Finger Lake, Alaska. Come on, buddy. Come on. Don't go. Don't go. I wasn't gonna plan. I wasn't planning on using the amp today, but this is a good reason. Uh, King on the five nine. He's I coming up. Five seven, five seven into Finger Lake, Alaska. Thank you so much. And seven He's coming up in power. Here we go. Here we go. Kilo India six November Alpha Zulu. QSL, QSL, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I have you 5-7, 5-7. Copy, copy. I have you at a wonderful audio, but you're 5-1, five, 5-1. One, five, one. Barely licking my meter, but you sound great here into Southern California. <laughs> Thank you so much for the contact. Great contact. 7-3. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. I wasn't even running full power when I was chasing those uh, Morse code stations earlier. That's fantastic. That is so cool. There you go. I'm in Cerritos, Cerritos, California. Uh, it's uh, southeast of Los Angeles. Roger, Roger. I grew up in the uh, San Pedro Palo Verdes area, so not far apart. Roger, Roger. Thanks for the SoCal contact. 7-3. 7-3, thank you. And at a new park at US 12153, parks on the air activator N9FAL. Listening. 
Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Okay, station X-ray Tango, stand by, station ending in Zulu, stand by. How about Kilo Echo 9, again please? Kilo Echo 9, again. Recognizing Kilo Echo 8, uh, Victor Echo Whiskey, you are 5-7 here in Idaho, QSL. Thank you from Michigan. Station ending in Zulu. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Okay, Josh. Uh, pleasure to work you for the first time. That's K I 6 N A Z. Um, really appreciate your informative and entertaining uh, videos. You're a 5 7 here in Idaho. Brand new park, United Sugar, 12153. Mark here, back to you. Oh, congratulations, Mark, on the new park. You sound great. You're a true 5 5 55, but your audio quality is fantastic. What are you running? Yeah, this is the uh, the 710, and I'm using uh, partially on your video the Porta Mast, but I'm combining the Porta Mast at 15 feet with the Alpha Antenna uh, Dipole V configuration QSL. Uh, copy that, copy that. It's doing uh, it's doing the work for you. It's uh, doing great. So thank you for the contact, and uh, it's great you've got some people there watching you and your showing the, the good information on amateur radio. So keep doing what you do in 7-3. 7-3, Josh, and thanks for all you do as well, and I'll look forward to the next one. 7-3, there was a station ending in X-ray Tango. Again, please. This guy's a good act. So I'm back at the park doing a double review, if you will, or double checkout. I'm not ready to kind of pass my verdicts on any of this stuff because this is like the first time I'm, I'm using it. So this is the Spool Tenna by KO4HUI, and this is an, an N-Fed, but it has a, a little unique design. It's actually on a spool with a little strain relief built into it, and I've, I've actually just used a strap that I have left over to throw it into a tree. And then that goes out to the little dude from Ham Radio Dude here on YouTube. A really smart idea for a compact mass system um, that includes a spike, but it uses the base of the pole to kind of fit into it. And it's it's, it's something I haven't really seen done. I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of people who've done it, uh, but it's, it's a really nice way. He's handling it really well. And I, I put some torsion, kind of tension load on it to see how it would handle this breeze that we got going on. It's pretty up and down, but so far it's doing a great job and uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, I'm not gonna say that the dude is gonna recommend this kind of setup, but uh, it's what I wanted to try it out in. And sure, you could probably run over the top kind of an inverted V type setup with an NFED, and that would work just fine. But, you know, we gotta have a little fun. We gotta stress test things now and then. So I gotta say, I'm pretty satisfied with my little grab and go 705 bag. And now with the addition of my, my little dude and my spool tenna here, I pretty much have everything I need, including the 50 watt amplifier I can choose to deploy or not. Uh, Denco battery is also in here. Links will be in the video description for all of this, including, why don't we just mention the spool tenna right up front. I didn't give you a ton of information other than show the band sweep. This is a 40 meter through 10 meter end fed antenna. Uh, there will be some coupon codes or free shipping that you might be able to avail yourself of before I do my final review on this thing. Links are there in the doobly-doo to check that out. And then the uh, Lil Dude. This is a, I believe a 16 foot mast. I'll append this if I'm wrong. Kind of a design decision, right? If uh, you're going to ask, I know you're going to ask, how's it compared to the Poto 20? I like both of these. I also like Mike and I like Sean as individuals. There's nothing bad to say about either one of these, but there is a, a slight difference, right? The, the Poto 20 is about two inches longer and it's also a little thinner. So what your applications might be a little bit different. This might fit in a water bottle pocket of a backpack a little bit better. This is probably gonna fit in a roller board or a suitcase that you might be taking portable. To talk a little bit about it, design decisions that I like here, you got a little lanyard on the top that you can clip an S-bean or two. And then if you open, so just a twist fit, that's the cap. And let me see if I can rotate it into frame right there. There's a little hole, see that? So if I wave my hand behind it, you can see there's a little hole so you can run a wire through it and it gives it a little bit longer space if you wanted to do like an inverted V or something like that for an end fed. And then the friction fit, 
holds it on really well. And I just kind of tapped it on there. The base, the butt piece, the threaded bit, if you turn the mast over and then unscrew it, that's where you can take that spike system and place it over the top. Sean has that available on his website as well. All the telescoping masks pretty much do this little twist off thing, but this is one of the first applications I've seen where you just slide it over the top after shoving the spike into the ground, and it works really well. Hopefully you like my little editing in the beginning of this video, something a little bit more artistic I'm playing around with, and we should have more of that in the future. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. 73.